Namaste and welcome to Flow and Restore Yoga. Today we're going to be focusing on ways to balance and activate energy at your sixth main chakra, the third eye center or Ajna chakra. For today's Flow and Restore physical yoga, you'll want to have a couple of blocks, a strap, a blanket, and a bolster. We also had a request by our live community to um, physically focus on releasing tension in the lower back. You'll see my helpers wandering around throughout class. So let's start by finding a comfortable seated position of your choice. You may find it helpful to elevate your pelvis on any of your props if you find that your hip flexors feel tight or your back tends to round so that you can lift the spine more easily tall. Take a moment to mentally arrive. You might scan the space around you and through your senses receive what feels soothing and peaceful and grounding, such as colors, textures, maybe even smells. So here's an excerpt from Anodea Judith, PhD, uh, her book, Wheels of Life, a classic guide to the chakra system. If you're unfamiliar with the chakra system, that is about your energy body, right? Even though we can't see energy usually, um, we can feel it. You know when your energy feels depleted or you feel like you have excess energy. So it's helpful to understand the qualities of energy, especially among the seven main energy centers. We have a lot more than seven, but this is where they intersect. Several channels of energy intersect, so it creates a larger um, vortex of energy. So the third eye energy center, also called the brow center, also called in Sanskrit, Ajna Chakra, is located towards the center of your brain. So if you look towards between the eyebrows and slightly above at the center of your forehead, think of going inward into the skull. So Albert Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. I'll repeat that. Imagination is more important than knowledge. How do you entertain your imagination on a daily basis? Do you give yourself time to do that? How does your imagination show up in your dreams? Do you remember your dreams? How do you use your imagination to solve problems in daily lives? How do you use your imagination to open yourself up to all possibilities, not just what you physically see right in front of you? In other words, the ability to think outside of the box. This is much about Ajna Chakra energy. I'm going to read it a little bit from the book. It is this gift of seeing both inner and outer. That is the essence and function of Chakra 6. The brow chakra, as it is often called, is located in the center of the head behind the forehead. It is associated with the third eye, an etheric organ of psychic perception floating between our two physical eyes. The third eye sees beyond the physical world, bringing us added insight, such as reading between the lines of written material brings us deeper understanding. The Sanskrit name of this chakra, as I mentioned, is Ajna, which originally meant to perceive and later to command. So much about perception. Now, as the seven main chakras each have color vibrations associated with them, the color vibration of Ajna chakra is indigo, which is like a deep blue violet mixture. And once again, the function is seeing, seeing beyond the physical and between the lines, so to say, and intuition. Now, our physical practice is going to look like bringing that area of the center of the forehead to touch the ground, such as in child's pose, going upside down like we did when we were working with a crown chakra to invite energy flow towards that region of the center of the head. 
and definitely meditation, which we always practice sitting down at the end. And really just being more intuitive with how you feel the sensations happening in the postures. I might even invite you to close your eyes as we flow through salutations or as we hold postures and really tune into your inner perception of what's happening. All right, so let's begin by checking in. You might close your eyes now and maybe rest a hand on the middle of your chest and another just below your belly button to bring more attention to your physical body as you observe it. Recognizing any sensations happening, letting go of having to label these sensations as good ones or bad ones. to allow us to open our perception more easily as judging things can easily limit our perception. Sense the quality of your breathing just as it is, no need to change it. Feel its depth, its pace, how smoothly it's flowing. Letting all those qualities inform you of how you're feeling in your energy right now. Now notice your mind. How are you feeling mentally? Are you distracted by thoughts of the past or planning in the future? Do you feel centered in the space you're sitting in right now? Does your mind feel alert, sleepy, foggy? Just observe again without judging it or yourself. Let's start to slow the breath down, breathing into your nose breathing out to your mouth. Try a few more exhales through the mouth with each inhalation becoming slightly more expansive. Feel how the muscles between your ribs stretch on the inhalation. Can you invite the back ribs to expand a little bit more? the collarbones to broaden a little wider. And even invite the breath to sink all the way down to the pit of your belly. Inviting a sense of spaciousness throughout your torso as you deepen your breath. Now you might bring your hands in prayer at your heart center, a gesture that symbolizes union and gratitude and reverence. As I invite you to practice gratitude by acknowledging a few things or beings in your life right now. Gratitude to those who've come before us, planting the seeds of all the opportunities, privileges that we get to enjoy today, such as this practice of yoga. Then bring to mind your intention that you are choosing to cultivate through this practice. Is there any area in your life in which you would like clarity, clear perception, a function of Ajna Chakra? Or maybe the open-mindedness to see more possibilities for a solution to enhance your creativity.
and to let go of attachment to any outcome, as well as acknowledge that we are in service to each other, not just to ourselves. I invite you to choose somebody that you would like to dedicate today's practice to. Together, let's open the practice by chanting Om, the seed sound of Ajna Chakra. So three times, let in a deep breath. Aum. Let's regulate our energy, inviting calm, focus, balance, by practicing ujjayi pranayama, victorious breathing. So closing the lips, if you can, just breathe through the nose and start to create a soft whispering sound by gently narrowing the back of your throat. That sound is created by gently constricting the back of the throat and then listen to it so that it can fine tune that it's as smooth and calm as possible and that you're breathing into the very top of the inhalation and matching that length as you breathe all the way down to the bottom of the exhalation. So intentionally establish a slow rhythm that will begin to move the body to. Listening to that rhythm, please come down to hands and knees. And let's begin in child's pose by bringing the inner edges of your feet together to touch. And whether knees together or apart, do what's comfortable for you. Sink your hips all the way back and down to your heels. Extend your arms forward so it's extended child's pose, helping to lengthen the sides of the torso and throughout the spine. Now, this is one gentle way to gently stretch your lower back. So actively draw your hips back and down. Lengthen your crown and arms forward while softening your shoulder blades back away from the neck. Let the area of the front area of Ajna Chakra make contact with the surface below. If it's not, you can use a block, any of your props to place your forehead on. You can even gently shake the head no, giving the neck a little stretch as well as you massage the external region of Ajna Chakra. Maybe nod the head yes as well. Keep tuning into your breathing. We're gonna slowly begin to move to the pace of each part of the breath. So separate your feet hips width apart and let your shins be parallel to each other. And on your next inhale, glide forward into tabletop and continue into cow pose, rolling your shoulders behind you as you lift the chest and look up. As you exhale, contract your abdomen, tuck the toes, but keep the knees on the ground, rounding into cat pose. Again, inhale, broaden your chest forward, gazing up. Maybe you continue cat-cow with your eyes closed and really feel into the subtlest sensations along the spine, throughout the neck, the shoulders. Maybe the internal sensations of the breath filling the lungs and exiting. Or the tilting of your pelvis forward and back. and the resulting sensations along your lower back. OK, 
continue with one more full round of Bidalasana, cat cow pose. At the end of your next exhalation, tuck your toes and lift your hips high. Press your thighs back, entering downward facing dog. Now use your intuition and listen to how your body may need to move and loosen up here for a few breaths. Maybe pedaling the feet, maybe swiveling the hips, maybe stretching a leg, shaking out the head. Explore and notice how these movements feel. Sense the way your body is continuously communicating to you what it needs. Stay aware of your breathing. And start to walk up to the front of your mat, entering a standing forward fold. Separate the feet apart at least hips distance, parallel them to each other, and bend your knees so much that your spine easily releases down without tensing. You can either hold opposite elbows and sway the spine, maybe shake and nod the head, or you can interlace the fingers behind your back and stretch the arms forward. Try to create as much space, especially in your neck, as possible by dropping your skull really loosely while floating your shoulder bones away from it. Maybe you flutter out the lips and help to loosen the jaw. <laughs> then drop the arms, let the torso hang freely as you bend the knees more. Press down through the feet and inhale slowly Roll your spine upright as if stacking one vertebra at a time, lifting your head last as you circle the shoulders back and down. Let's join the palms in prayer at your heart center, standing tall in mountain pose or padasana, reconnecting with your intention you're cultivating. Beginning our sun salutations, offering gratitude to the sun. You might opt to close your eyes as we practice them whenever you feel comfortable trying or play with your comfort zone. So Surya Namaskar C. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead and roll your shoulders back and down. Exhale, bow forward from your hips. Plant your fingertips on the ground. Inhale, step your left knee behind you to a kneeling lunge and tilt your chin up. Hold the breath as you step to plank pose. Then exhale, lower your knees, chest, then chin, Ashtangasana. Inhale, slide forward and gently roll the shoulders back to cobra pose. Exhale, tuck your toes and lift your hips back to downward facing duck. Inhale, step your left foot beside your left thumb Lower your right knee, tilt the chin up. Exhale, step your right foot forward and fold. Press through your feet, inhale, rise, lifting your heart towards the sun. Exhale, join your palms from your third eye center to your heart center. Side two, inhale, sweep your arms overhead in Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bow forward in Uttanasana. Plant your fingertips on the earth. Inhale, step your right knee back in Anjaneyasana. Hold the breath as you step to plank pose. Then exhale to Ashtangasana, lowering knees, then chest, then chin. Inhale to Bhujangasana, which is cobra pose. Exhale to downward dog or Adho Mukha Shvanasana. Inhale, step the right foot beside your right thumb. Lower your left knee, tilt the chin up. Exhale, step your left foot forward and fold. Rooting down to your soles, inhale, rise. Lifting your heart towards the sky. Exhale, marry your palms in prayer from Ajna to heart chakra. Let's move into sun salutation A, Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, bow into yourself. 
This time, press your hands on your shins, blocks or the ground, and inhale, lift your heart and lengthen the spine halfway up. Step into your variation of plank, legs straight or knees down. This time, I invite you to exhale as you glide forward and lower halfway down to Chaturanga Dandasana. Either inhale to Cobra or Upward Facing Duck. Exhale to Downward Facing Duck. Let's pause here for two deep breaths. Let the head hang free. Lift the shoulders and hips back. Spread your fingers like wide roots of a tree. When you've emptied the second breath, walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat. Uttanasana, forward fold. Press with your hands and inhale, lengthen forward to half forward fold, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale again, Uttanasana. Press with your feet, inhale, rise up to Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, join your palms in prayer in Padasana. Once more, inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen to Ardha Uttanasana. Step to plank or float to Chaturanga or lower knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra or upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Pause. And I'm going to interrupt the salutation here. Now, in downward dog, inhale, sweep your right leg behind you. And exhale, step the foot halfway towards your hands onto the right edge of the mat. Pivot both feet to face the right edge of the mat and lean the torso towards the front of the mat until you're in side plank with the support of the right foot in front of you. Raise the right arm to the sky, flex both feet, and start to lean onto the pinky toe edges of both feet as you sink your left hip to tap the ground, sweep the right arm towards the front of the room. Press down with your left foot, left hand. Inhale, lift the left hip and sweep the right hand towards the back of the room. Let's try four more. Maybe close the eyes. Inhale, tap down. Exhale, lift. Inhale, down. Exhale, lift. Inhale, down. Exhale, lift. Inhale, down. Exhale, lift. Now, place the right hand on the floor. Step back to downward dog. Pause for one cycle of breath. Inhale, raise your left leg behind you. Exhale, step the left foot halfway towards your hands on the left edge of your mat. Pivot your feet to face the left edge of your mat and lean the torso forward until your right shoulder is right on top of your right wrist, side plank. Raise the left arm up, flex the right foot, breathe. Now start to lean onto the outer edges of both feet flexed as you sink the right hip to touch the ground, sweep the left arm overhead towards the front of the room. Keep sliding the right shoulder blade down the back. Inhale, press up, sweep the left hand towards the back of the room. Exhale, lower. Four more, inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, and exhale down. Now inhale up, step forward, and fold. Bring the inner edges of the feet together, inhale lengthen halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees together, inhale, Utkatasana, chair. We're going right into Sun Salutation B. Exhale, forward fold. Option to close the eyes. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Walk or float to your vinyasa of choice. Take it through with your breath. When you arrive in downward dog, inhale, raise the right leg back. We're going to take this, this salutation a little differently. So exhale, bend the knee towards your nose and step the foot beside your right thumb. Stay high on the ball of your left foot. Inhale up to crescent lunge, then to your left side, open up as you exhale to warrior two. Flip the right palm to face up. Inhale, side bend to peaceful warrior towards the rear of your mat. Exhale all the way down into your chosen vinyasa or cat cow. 
follow your place of breath. Downward facing dog, last side. Inhale, raise your left leg back. Exhale, bend the knee towards your nose and step the foot beside your left thumb. Stay high on the ball of your right foot. Inhale, rise to crescent lunge. Exhale to your right in warrior two. Flip the left palm to face up. Inhale, peaceful warrior, side bend towards your rear wall. Last vinyasa, take your version of it. Let's meet lying in Sphinx pose, belly to the floor, forearms in front of you, elbows under shoulders, chest gently lifted. Mm, few deep breaths here. Softening the shoulders back and down. Let's bend the right knee, cross the left forearm in front of your chest. We're now entering the yin and restorative part of our practice. Backstroke your right arm and see if you can catch hold of the big toe side of your right ankle or foot so that you can open the front of the right shoulder rather than round forward. Have your knees no wider apart than your hips distance and ground your two frontal hip bones, both helping to stabilize your lower back. Gently bring the right heel slightly to the outside of your right hip as you turn your chest fully to face forward. Relax the shoulders here. Maybe close the eyes and really tune in, especially to the subtlest sensations happening as you listen to your breathing. On your next exhale, come back to Sphinx Pose and slide your knees as close together as you comfortably can. Cross the right forearm in front of your chest and bend your left knee. Backstroke your left arm and try to hold the big toe side of your left ankle or foot. Knees no wider apart than your hips distance. Ground your two frontal hip bones. Turn your chest to face forward as you relax the shoulders and bring your left heel gently, slightly to the outside of your left hip. A few more deep breaths. On your next exhalation, release the left leg and slide your right arm wide to the right with a palm face down on the ground. Left hand beside the left shoulder, press the ground away with it and lean your right ear onto the floor as you start to roll over towards your right outer hip. Take a moment to slide that right shoulder blade further down the back, lengthening the right side of your neck. And then notice how far you need to lean back in order to feel a balanced opening in the front of your right shoulder. Can you use the way you breathe to help relax your body, especially the area of your shoulders and neck, your jaw, your eyes? You could step the left foot behind you if you need a deeper pot, uh, variation. You could wrap the left arm behind you to change it up. Got about just five more breaths here. Take your time to gently roll onto your belly. Leaning the left ear to the ground, slide your left arm wide to the left, palm face down. And with your right hand on the floor beside your right shoulder, press the ground away and start to roll over towards your left outer hip. Take your time to really pay attention to what this side of your shoulders is asking for or not asking for. 
It's easy to go into auto mode and think we need to do exactly the same thing that we did on the first side. Pay attention, use your intuition to feel how far back you need to lean. And notice what your body is, how your body is responding. Couple last deep breaths. Start to softly roll onto your belly once again. Find your two blocks. Now we're going to continue just a little bit more with the shoulders. So placing your two blocks either on their lowest height, like a number 11 right here in front of you or in the medium height, which will be a deeper stretch into your upper back, shoulders, and triceps. So if you're feeling really stiff in that area, start with the lowest height. And then if you find that, hmm, not feeling much, then you can tilt it higher. So as you place your elbows about shoulders distance apart on the blocks, no wider than shoulders distance, bend the elbows and Rotate your triceps, outer upper arms towards the ground. Draw the shoulder blades back, bring your palms into prayer or fingertips touching each other and start to trace the thumbs back, down your skull, down your neck, as far back as you can. Let the head rest down. <sighs> Bringing the area of third eye center towards the ground. You might visualize at the third eye center, the color indigo, glowing lights towards the center of your brain, near the area where the pineal gland sits. Sensing your ability to perceive clearly, not just the outside layer of things, but to sense the deeper meaning of things. Trusting your inner knowing. Going to be here for another minute as we're holding this more as a restorative type posture. Now sense the bottom of the next exhalation before you gently begin to lift your skull and you place your hands alongside your floating ribs so that you can press up and lower to sit with the legs stretched in front of you. Come into a seated spinal twist. Bend your right knee and step your right foot on the ground. 
either in front of your right hip or crossed outside of your left knee in which you might also bend your left knee. Choose the setup that allows you to equally root your left and right sitting bones and sit tall while your chest is broad and your shoulders are relaxed. Place the right hand behind your pelvis, press into the ground with your lower body and lift up through the top of your head as you breathe in. Keep your legs and pelvis still and exhale, turn your chest towards your right wall. Lower the left arm to hold your right leg or hook the elbow outside the thigh and keep rooting down through the pelvis, stretching up through the spine with each inhalation while twisting a little more with the exhalation. Those of you requested a lower back stretch, you might close your eyes and visualize the area of your lower back, especially the part that's really calling your attention today. And in the spinal twist, visualize breathing into that part of your lower back needing your attention. Letting the breath be a caring, loving presence in your body. And as you breathe out slowly, visualize anything that you need to release, perhaps, in the area of the lower back, whether it be physical tension or pain or mental stress, like thoughts of instability or insecurity, which is often the kind of energy related to lower back issues in the energy world. Maybe even noticing any beliefs that are showing up as you really listen to your body, bringing out the stress that might be held in the lower back. With an exhalation, unwind your spine and let's switch sides. See if you can set up in a similar way, if your body allows it. Bend the left knee, step the left foot on the floor in front of the left hip or crossed outside of the right knee or also bend the right knee here. Place the left hand behind your pelvis. Press into the ground as you rise, breathing in. Keep the legs and pelvis still as you twist, breathing out. Lower your right hand to hold your left leg or hook the elbow outside of the thigh and continue to root down, rise, and twist. You might also Close the eyes and visualize breathing into any areas of your body here that are asking for your attention. And maybe instead of doing anything, practicing, listening, just observing, what does that part of your body want you to know? As our mind can continuously analyze things and make arguments for any side of perceiving something. Our bodies hold truths that are direct experience. And part of cultivating our inner knowing is to really tune in to what your body is saying. Last couple deep breaths here. With an exhalation, unwind your spine and let's set up for a restorative version of 
Baddha Konasana. So grab either one or two blocks, bring the soles of your feet together like prayer position, and test it out first how you want to set up. So you can bring the heels really close to your groins. And by the way, if your knees are lifting uncomfortably, you might elevate your pelvis on a fold of blanket or bolster. Or you can, in whatever degree, slide the heels away from your groins. Just make sure the feet are still together in that prayer position. And so feel out where is your body asking you to be and what variation of this posture. And then once you've set up the lower body, you can set up the blocks if needed, either a block or two blocks stacked so that when you lean forward and rest your forehead onto the block, your neck can feel spacious. You're not curving too much with the shoulders rounding forward so you can breathe well. Or a slanted block if your feet are far away like this. So set up in a way that you can bring that contact of the outer part, outer area of Ajna Chakra onto your block or whatever surface it's leaning on. And I'm gonna listen to the time for three minutes here. Root down to your sitting bones, lift and lengthen the lower spine from the pelvis, broaden your chest, slide your shoulders down the back, lengthen the front of your neck, lengthen the back of your neck and the sides of your neck. Now make any adjustments if needed to your body so that you can comfortably enough sink into stillness now. Invite the breath in. Feel the breath releasing. If your attention is drifting off, notice where it's gone. Feel your breath again.
Feel the very bottom of the next exhalation. And when you start to move, bring your attention to the subtlest movements. Take your time coming up to sit. When your spine is upright, stretch the legs out in front of you. You might circle out the feet, circle out the shoulders. See if your body needs any movement after being still for a few minutes. It's slow even breaths. Let's prepare for Paschimottanasana, our final posture before one more pranayama practice. So as you straighten the legs, separate the feet about hips width apart. Uh, we're only going to be in this posture for about 10 deep breaths. If you would like to use a strap as an extension of your arms so that you have enough slack to relax the shoulders down rather than rounding them up, you can use that or you might eventually clasp your big toes. Root down to your sitting bones. And as you're flexing your feet by curling the toes back towards the shins, press the mounds of your big toes forward. Activate the muscles in your quadriceps to support your hamstrings. And then the pelvis feel heavy as you lift the lower spine. Visualize this, maybe close the eyes. Let's spend a few breaths in Dandasana, stick pose. There's a pelvis and legs press down, there's a rebound effect naturally of the spine becoming taller. Can you invite the breath to rise from the bottom of the spine up through the crown? And as it passes through each vertebra, it's creating more space in between each vertebra of the spine and maybe helping to restack and realign the spine within its natural curves. And as you get a little taller with each new breath, can you invite the shoulders to relax more deeply? As if you have two sandbags resting on the tops of the shoulders. Feel that your front ribs are sealing in towards your back ribs. And then when you're ready, begin to hinge forward as you breathe out slowly with each breath, finding the degree a folding forward that allows you to continue breathe well, to breathe well, and to keep a slight lift at your chest, and continue to lengthen the spine with the shoulders relaxing back. Paschimottanasana. Hips towards the lower spine create traction as the spine grows forward from the pelvis. Sing is another tool to activate the energy of your third eye. Begin to lead from the chest as you breathe in to slowly rise all the way up to sit. And please place your body in a comfortable seated position in which you can breathe well for our last pranayama practice of Nodi Shodhana Pranayama, alternate nostril breathing. As I mentioned last week, it's an energy balancing breath and it helps to also balance the left and right hemispheres of the brain bringing our attention inward, strengthening intuition, intuitive knowing. You might rest the left hand on your lap and place the hand in Gyan Mudra, which supports that quality of tuning inward. And with the right hand, stick out your thumb, pinky, and ring fingers. 
Breathing just through the nose, let the breath be very soft and quiet. We'll use the right thumb to close the right nostril like this, and the right ring and pinky to close the left nostril like this. Alternate nostril breathing. Let's practice three cycles of it together, and then continue three cycles on your own before letting go of controlling the breath. Then observe how you feel. So before we start, oh, while we're practicing it, you might close your eyes and turn your inner gaze towards the center of your brain, visualizing that indigo light I spoke of earlier at your Ajna Chakra. So let's prepare to start by gathering a full inhale. Open the mouth, maybe sigh it out. Close the lips, right thumb, close right nostril. Inhale left for six, five, four, three, two, one, hold for two, one, close left, exhale right, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold two, one, stay here, inhale right, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold two, one, close right, exhale left, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold two, one. Second cycle, inhale left, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold two, one, close left, exhale right, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold two, one, inhale right, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold two, one, close right, exhale left, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold two, one. Third cycle, inhale left for six, hold two, close left, exhale right, six, hold two, inhale right, six, Hold two, close right, exhale left, six. Hold two. Continue for three more cycles on your own. When you have finished, ease into natural breathing and notice anything you feel. And when you're ready, take your time lowering your body to the ground. Find a comfortable position in which you can lie down in stillness, resting with eyes closed and natural breath for a few minutes of Shavasana, corpse pose.
as you rest a little longer with your eyes closed, mentally scan your body and observe anything you feel now. Notice the effects of your asanas. Take the time to truly listen to how your body wants to begin moving and waking up. Let one stretch inspire another. Gradually turning over onto your right side. Rest your head there for a few moments. And notice the quality of your breathing. Tune into how your energy feels. So we've done quite a bit in this hour to invite calm to your nervous system. So try to get up very slowly, maintain that inner sense of calm, which is another way to welcome intuitive energy, right? So take your time rising when you feel ready to and find a comfortable way to sit again for five minutes of sitting meditation. You might place the hands in Gyan Mudra, maybe close the eyes. Once again, visualizing at the center of your skull, the center of your brain, a glowing indigo light. And as you naturally breathe in, visualizing from the crown of your head like a portal opening, renewed energy entering that indigo light, Ajna Chakra. from source, from the universe, from life around us, renewed prana entering that energy center. And as you breathe out, see that indigo light and renew, feel that in renewed prana expanding throughout your physical body, down to the root chakra, down to your legs and feet, and out of your body rooting downward towards the center of the earth and outward, radiating laterally and above, like the rays of a sun, inhaling, visualizing, energy pouring down into your Ajna Chakra, the color indigo. Exhaling, visualizing that indigo and renewed energy expanding throughout your physical body and outside of your physical body in all directions. Feel a sense of benevolence in that energy. You might continue this as you continue breathing naturally.
Now notice how you're feeling mentally and emotionally. You might join the palms in prayer. Closing our practice with gratitude as you acknowledge anything you would like to appreciate right now. Bring to mind once again your intention you are cultivating during this practice and after. And remember to whom you dedicated today's practice. You might visualize them in some way receiving benefit. Together, let's chant the Bija Mantra, the seed sound of Ajna Chakra. Om. Three times, let in a deep breath. Aum. Aum. towards your heart center, acknowledge the light within. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.